Hey guys, this is Jensen here, and I think there's been some discussion going around as to what's the best way to structure training for teams, and the big two big approaches that are being put into question here is the Western approach that's been adopted first by the European teams, I think from 2018, and then by the American teams just this year, where they would play one block of five games, whereas over in Asia, the default would be to play two blocks of three games. There's been a fair bit of arguments for both sides, and I will attempt to break them both down. So there's two general approaches towards this, and the first one sees the 1x5 being played from about 1pm to 7pm with a short 30 minute break in between the second or the third game, while the 2x3 method will see them play two blocks of three games, the first starting at 2pm to 5pm, and the second block being from 7pm to 10pm with a two hour dinner break in between so that players have enough time to recover from the food that they have eaten during dinner. The big advantage of doing the 1 times 5 block would be that it leaves up time for night activities in training. And however, the immediate drawback is there's a lower number of games overall. And the immediate response to this is that it might seem that it is more subject to heavy disruption via cancellations or trolling. Should one team cancel a single block of scrims, we would see 4 to 5 games be lost right off the bat. However, one more argument for the 1 times 5 block is that it simulates the rigor of a best of 5 series. Whereas for the 2 times 3 block, it leaves uh, less time for additional reviewer training as it will have to be after scrim hours starting after 10 pm. However, it gives, does give you 20% more games than a 5 game schedule and it allows for more scrim diversity and options. However, it has been observed the training time might be taken for granted and overall scrim quality would be decreased in the 2 times 3 approach. For me personally, I'm always going to be a big advocate of the 1 times 5 block, and I'm going to explain why in this video. So this is what a weekly schedule would look like with a 1 times 5 schedule, where you would start the day from anywhere between 11 to 1 p.m. You have a solid 5-hour block where you play scrims, you have a team dinner or time for players to eat, and this allows you lots of time for pre-scrim and post-scrim activities. So this gives players ample time to play solo queue. Imagine that the cutoff is about 2 a.m. depending on uh, which region you are in. And it also gives you lots of flexibility around non scrim activities. I'm able to schedule one-on-ones. I'm able to conduct visualization exercises. And I can even conduct team activities or team bonding activities during the nighttime as well. Uh, additional team activities that can be done as team board reviews or team discussions to sort out and hash out problems within the team itself. And this is what it could look like if I were to take a similar structure. Now note that this is what a 2 times 3 schedule would look like if I were to try to slot the same visualization exercise, vamping meeting and one-on-ones in after everything ends. I'd note that everything would end much significantly later or possibly up to 2 a.m. And this would definitely put a larger tool on the players. And it is also important to note that solo queue hours would be going down as well. But the truth of the reality is, is that most of the time in Asian regions, this is the scrim schedule that you end up seeing with very little team activities being played, uh, being done after scrims and just that being time for solo queue being given to the players as a whole. So players having limited post scrim time is about four hours worth. And the big question that has to be answered here is, are scrims the best way to improve? Now, to better answer the question, we have to kind of examine how learning works. So, the average person has a short-term memory that can hold about six items. If you just ask them without to, to use any tricks that memory champions do use to recall six separate unique entities. Uh, most people can handle between five to six to all the way up to nine, right? Which is why your, your phone numbers are usually between eight to ten numbers in general. And how this works, or how our brains work is that it will attempt to cement short term into long term memory via repetition and association. Now, repetition is the first method where you get yourself used to repeating a specific task to the point where it becomes ingrained into your long term memory. Whereas association is a memory trick that people have been using more and more often, where what we do is that they, they call it a memory palace where you imagine certain things and you draw associations between objects for you to remember things more clearly. Or you can tie things and link things up together in a much bigger picture, a much bigger concept that will allow for the easier recall of information where you have one thing linking into another. 
So the goal here would be to structure training to provide a coherent means of illustrating or testing concepts to provide such repetitions and possible associations for players to be able to learn and develop new concepts. So having more games to increase the likelihood of repetition, however, the high variance in scrims would actually decrease the strength of association. And this is something that I've anecdotal experience as well, right? When after a long day of scrims, you ask the players, and this is something that I always do, I always get them, re get them to recap, like what happened today, right? And the longer the, the, the day of scrims goes by, it's not that the players actually recall more things, but rather at the end of the day, they end up to, to a point where they actually say, you know what, I've played so many games, I'm actually not sure what I've learned today. So it is actually important to have um, a strong usage of pre and post scrim activity to set out the learning objectives and be able to recap things for players. So the repetition doesn't have to come in the form of repeating the execution within the game itself. It could be repeating in the form of a reiteration through a verbal means or through a demonstration via riff kit or an, um, using, using what we call wargaming tactics, right? To enhance association so that players are able to piece together the pieces of the puzzle and form a coherent thought process that can then transform a logical process into a more heuristic shortcut that they can assess in the future. So if you're asking what's the right number, uh, I've personally found it very useful to aim to teach about one to two big concepts per day. And the important thing to take away here when we are trying to answer the question of if is more scrims better is that increasing skew scrim numbers actually use diminishing returns right and it can even do negative returns in certain cases where you just overwhelm players with the sheer amount of information that they're facing at least in the learning phase now the counter argument to all of this is the optimization argument right where if there's a learning focus it's a lot about um, developing players in the information collecting and information processing phase of things where it doesn't focus so much on uh, the nitty-gritty the nitty integrity details of how exactly they build a specific champion or composition. It's about how do you c collect information and process it to make the best decision subsequently, right? And this is the learning step where you're trying to understand the theory. However, as the game starts to approach a soft state, where right, once you know that this is going to be the general decision tree that each team and, and each player is going to work towards, uh, the optimization phase starts to come in, right? Where the information collection and processing, where you're not so much trying to learn the game, but you're trying to refine, make sure that you're making the right decisions if you're getting the right um, right stimuli and that you're able to execute on those decisions itself so this is where you can argue that it, uh, an increased number of scrims will actually allow for iterative problem solving and mechanical optimization if you've already figured out that this is how you want to play the game and there's not a lot of space to say learn new concepts or there or the methods pretty much solved at this point of time so the math argument is something that um the the asian coaches like like to use where they would examine this and say that okay it's simple math right you play five games a day we play six games a day so uh i kind of like broke it down across the the, the series of, of an entire season right and the general idea is that if, if you play a 10 week regular season with two warm-up games for match day and you have four weeks of pre-season another four weeks of postseason, you'll come around to be having a 20 percent 18 to 20 percent um advantage right for the two times three block which is quite significant right 18 percent is quite a significant amount of games more that they're playing um, a significant increase in the, in the amount of time that they have to test refine and develop strategies accordingly now however the beauty of the one times five block as we mentioned earlier is that if you can identify the two phases accordingly and you have a like to schedule in the pre-season and during the, the first part or at least even throughout the whole regular season where you play just a strict 1.5 what one times five and then you introduce an additional night block of one times three for the postseason or when you really want to ramp things up as you approach what we call a high key portion right this gap in numbers actually goes on significantly Right, the number of games per week. If you have four weeks of postseason, or if you start to ramp up to it, say even the second half, you can even end up with more games than the two times three block, as you end up doing eight games in a single, in a single week. And this can also factor for the, the regular arguments as they burn out. And in this case, it's very clearly identifying that here we're trying to optimize. We know what we're playing for. We know what the strategy is that we're going to be playing. It's just about executing, making sure that our communication is on point. We are seeing the right things, and we are able to execute and hit the right spells in the team fights. Then this case you can up the number of games and it actually comes up to about the, three, the two times three block over the course of an entire split only having about a four percent lead which is significantly less than what we were seeing earlier okay. now 
this is once again that's a more anecdotal thing but to bring it to math and my anecdotal experiences right looking at um scrim loss uh, I, I have a pretty decent comparison here where you have EVOS, which was a top Vietnamese team when I was coaching them at the point of time, and Legacy Esports, which was, a, which was a top team in the Oceanic OPL region, right? And both of these teams, they had the, the growing pains of being a, a top team that was kind of like smashing everybody at the point of time. So, scrim cancellations were a um, fairly uncommon, it's a commonly uncommon occurrence in these scenarios, right? So. For Legacy, we had a total of 365 potential scrim games according to the, the schedule that I planned out. And reviewing it, we had about 21 potential games that were cancelled due to the skill difference. Uh, there was one or two teams that were the chief culprits of these scrim cancellations, but it was quite significant towards the starting part of the season. And uh, eight potential games were cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances, be it that certain teams had a medical emergency, they had to attend to, to certain... Um, logistical issues that's happening within the facility or perhaps there was a medical emergency that was happening for one of the players right whereas on, on evos uh there was six percent of games that were cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances right which was significantly higher and these unforeseen circumstances you could say that they weren't entirely unforeseen because very often we would we would be told that we had to cancel scrims because uh they needed to do a media day they needed to do a media event which is something that would be uh much more easily scheduled for if you're the one times five system as you would then have a very clear area of time which is within reasonable daylight hours where uh media uh media personnel or or management can come in and do meetings with the team accordingly but about six percent of the games were indeed cancelled which is about one block every two weeks that were cancelled due to such unforeseen circumstances that somebody says all of a sudden, okay, um, be it medical emergency, be it uh, having to go for media photo shoots, or having senior management coming over to visit and task at the cancel scrims to hold a meeting with senior management. And about two of every eight blocks would be cancelled due to skill difference, right? And I think that this is where the we talked about in uh, the two times three block teams are less serious to, to playing a, playing a full block, right? You go in, you will book a scrim of a certain team, you play that, and if you get smashed too hard or you smash the opponents too hard, there's a very good chance that the opponent will cancel simply because they feel that there's no value in continuing on the scrim as uh, as they would just say that, okay, we've got another block later on, let's just cancel this, the players can go play solo queue, and then we'll play another block later in the evening, right? Or we already have one block earlier in the day, so if the evening block doesn't go too well, it's, it's fine. So when there's a big skew difference, the likelihood of teams cancelling would be significantly higher. And for EVOS, we were a team that were, were, were scrim gods, right? We were smashing most teams and scrims, at least within the, the Vietnamese scene. So it was quite common that we were scrim a team, and then be the player having mental boom issues, or, or uh, just players feeling that there's no point in continuing the scrim, and we would lose about one or two games from such a cancellation. And one thing that happened as well was that before a match day, uh, you would actually have teams very often coming up and say, and booking a scrim for that evening, and right before the scrim itself, or at the start of the scrim, they say that, hey, we, think we need to cancel the scrim because things aren't going well on our side, and we need this time to go and recalibrate and refigure out what a big, big man is going to be. Because all this activities that's supposed to be a post scrim activity they bring it into scrim time so they would actively cancel scrim blocks and use this time to plan our band picks if they felt that okay our band picks not working out we're testing the strategy it's not working throughout the entire week and it's the, the day before the match day itself how do we change our game plan for the next day if they needed to do that they would cancel the scrim in such a scenario and i think we did this a few times as well ourselves well while, while i was on we lost right so if we were to look at the overall scrim loss percentage for legacy it was less than 10 percent only about eight percent of scrims of the total 365 were cancelled whereas in evos it was close to 20 percent 22.5 percent right all scrims were cancelled so about one in every five games would be cancelled in such a setup be it due to unforeseen circumstances and and definitely these things can be changed right definitely these things can be changed and i think that this is a, a rather small sample size and perhaps with, for better scrim culture with better uh, coaching some of these things can definitely be avoided and this number can go down on on the evil side definitely but i think that this does illustrate the the way that the scheduling ends up um putting you at a higher risk of cancellations as a whole now, if we were to plug these numbers back into the original numbers, so over a a ten ten weeks, uh, a ten week season, right, with four weeks of preseason and four weeks of postseason, and if we account for eight percent scrim loss for one times five and a twenty two point five scrim loss for a um, two times three block system, you would actually end up with the one 
times five system having a higher number of effective screams being played, right? With 423 and 421 only being played by the two times three system. So be it from being more effective in the way that, that allows me to teach the game, all the way down to the actual numbers, right? The statistical um, projection as to the number of games that will be played. So even if we were to like move these numbers around, I would do. I would think that the additional game that's played due to the overall increase in quality and the higher chance of uh, things being cancelled, it kind of evens up in the end. And of course, for the one times five block, you always have the option of ramping things up and putting an additional block in. Whereas you could definitely do the same for the two times three block, as we have always heard about Asian teams doing the, the three times three block as a whole. Uh, the overall decrease in scrim quality would make the case for the one times five block being much more compelling in, in this scenario. And with that, that wraps up this video as to my, or my thoughts as to how teams should structure training and I'm definitely a big advocate of the one times 5 block with there being night activities for you to really solidify learning and if you need to ramp things up towards the end of the season or for a crucial high key portion of, of the campaign then you can always add an, an additional block of 3 or maybe even 4 or even do a second block of 5 now those options are a little bit more unexplored and it's definitely interesting to hear your thoughts below in the comments if you have enjoyed this insight into the way that i structure coaching and training uh, please do leave this video a like and consider subscribing to my youtube channel uh, this is jensen and i bid all of you a nice day